Louisiana Landmark Society 2020 Awards for Excellence in Historic Preservation. Made possible in part by GBX Group, LLC. Tuna Construction. And the generous support of the sponsors and patrons who worked with us through uncertain times to ensure that these award-winning projects get the recognition they deserve. Thank you. You know, New Orleans, I can only talk about New Orleans, but it wouldn't be New Orleans without its architectural heritage. I mean, it wouldn't be the same city. Uh, I don't know what it would be but it certainly wouldn't be what it is. I love New Orleans architecture. I think it's what draws me here, what keeps me here, and what keeps me happy. And I hope we can continue to save and, and revitalize our neighborhoods. Um, I believe that there's a lot to fight for here. There's always a struggle between the old and the new, and what can we do to, to protect what we have while progressing into the new? begins with little nuggets of understanding about the inherent beauty and truth of old things and, um, and recognizing them for what they are, um, antiques that have survived and that you suddenly have a, a feeling of responsibility for something that you understand. Um, if you just pass by something and don't look at it, you won't take ownership, spiritual ownership of that. But once you begin to understand it and see its needs, then the, uh, the desire rises to, to help it out and to help out the neighborhood that it's in, not just some, some inanimate object, but the, uh, the area and the people that are, that are affected by it. Neighborhoods have a strong identity in this city. Neighborhood names were changing back then, and, and the names uh, fed into an identity of the neighborhood that was becoming really very compelling. Um, th these neighborhoods were emerging as real forces in the community. I mean, people recognized that these were not neighborhoods to be abandoned, these were neighborhoods to be saved. And that feeling, I think, permeates throughout the entire community. But the ultimate goal is to have a sustaining community that serves the interest of everyone in the community uh, economically and culturally uh, in ways that they would want to continue to live here. And that's what our goal is. Louisiana Landmarks is so proud to offer these awards because it's, we need to cherish and celebrate any time buildings are renewed and restored and that they can continue for the future. Bone Motor Company, honoring 2700 Bone Motor LLC, The Rhodes Family, Gulf Coast Housing Partnership, Terrell Faubacher Architects, F.H. Myers Construction. This long-awaited renovation saved a vacant but fondly remembered former automobile dealership building in the Broadmoor neighborhood. Designed by Emil Weil, the circa 1923 Bone Motor Company on South Broad Street anchored its neighborhood for decades. Its history and prominent site were not enough to arrest the deterioration that began with the closure of the business. The decline continued for years as the building sat vacant. It was eventually reduced to the mere shell of a building. Much of its roof, many windows, and the second story flooring were missing, and the Louisiana Landmark Society named it one of New Orleans' nine most endangered sites in 2008. 
the developers arranged financing and secured an anchor tenant, but adaptive reuse first required the reconstruction of the second and third floor roofs, including joist and decking. The cast stone Italian Renaissance features of the facade and the entrance were cleaned and repaired, and new windows were installed on the facade, reproducing the 1951 window treatment. A window conservation program was employed on the rear and right side elevation, requiring removal of all glass panes and repair restoration of metal elements before reinstallation. Bone Motor Company lettering was carefully removed and conserved. After being individually listed on the National Register in 2011, the building qualified for historic tax credits. The respectful reconstruction enabled this historic building to be successfully transformed into a vibrant community health facility, resulting in a boost to economic development and key services in a struggling neighborhood. 614 Gravier Street, honoring Conrad, Duke Williams, Shoepick Holdings, Carr, Riggs and Ingram, and Cypress Building Conservation. When acquired by the owners in 2013-2014, these circa 1840 red brick Greek revival style warehouse stores with granite columns set vacant and deteriorating. Historic millwork was missing, brick needed repointing, and interiors were gutted. Because of their small footprint, the buildings had escaped the attention of large-scale developers. Today, the combined buildings again incorporate a bustling commercial space with a coffee shop, bar, and theater space on the first floor, offices on the second, and apartments on the third and fourth. The father and daughter Williams team was well suited for the challenge. Courtney had returned to New Orleans in 2012 after receiving her master's in historic preservation from the University of Pennsylvania, and with fellow graduate student alumnus Michael Shoriak, had founded Cypress Building Conservation. Financing was secured in March 2017, largely dependent on the use of historic tax credits, and thus began the meticulous three-year renovation. Shoriak and Williams self-performed much of the work to ensure the retention of as much historic material as possible. If not reused in the bones of the building, original fabric was incorporated into the finishes. The building's character-defining materials remain, including wood floors, plastered and exposed brick walls, and wood ceilings. The faded painted moniker for Edison Photograph Company, a tenant in the late 19th century, was retained, and interior architectural remnants were kept, such as the early 1900s freight elevator. The buildings have been readied for future generations while honoring the original fabric. Jewel of the South, honoring John Stubbs, Traplin Pier Architects, MacRosty Historic Advisors LLC, Tidewater Construction, and IMC Consulting Engineers. Located on the ragged edge of the French Quarter amidst a vast parking lot, this prototypical brick Creole cottage remains as the sole survivor of a circa 1835 row that extended to the corner of North Rampart Street. The other three were demolished in the late 1950s by Mossy Motors, then located at 41022 North Rampart, during the decades when this fringe area was removed from the jurisdiction of the Vaucaré Commission. Fortuitously, over the years, this historic agency regained control to protect this significant property. Today, this Creole cottage has been restored and repurposed as a stylish mecca for food and drink connoisseurs as well as for devotees of architecture while maintaining its historic finishes and footprint. Its name, Jewel of the South, pays homage to a mid-19th century bar on Gravier Street where Joseph Santi first made the Brandy Crusta, the featured drink of this new 21st century tavern. The main entry to the restaurant takes patrons through the passageway to a lush courtyard. Its interior features an antique bar originally from London and most recently Washington DC, which served as the design springboard for the space. The historic stair was reworked to accommodate modern day code and create a seamless flow to the upper dining area that features a small bar, exposed wood roof rafters, and original wood floors. The Jewel of the South continues the timeless tradition of welcoming public houses located in cozy spaces.
Maison de la Luz, honoring the domain companies, SQ Dumez Ripple, Palmasano LLC, Pontchartrain Mechanical, Morphy Makovsky Incorporated, Spackman Mossop and Michaels, Studio Sham Cherie, AKRF Acoustical Design, Sean O'Connor Lighting, Frischert's Electric Company. The renovation of this six-story 1906 Dybola and Owen office building gives it new life as another popular Atelier Ace Hotel. The award-winning company operates hotels, restaurants, and event venues throughout the nation and overseas, specializing in the redevelopment of historic buildings and neighborhoods. One of two Ace brand hotels in New Orleans, the Maison de la Luz is just across Lafayette Street from the company's first Ace Hotel in the city, a 2017 award winner. The interior design, led by Studio Sham Cherie of Los Angeles, has resulted in a space of striking beauty, and the stunning Art Nouveau lobby has been restored to its former glory. Designed in collaboration with Eskew Dumez Ripple, the hotel now shines with a revitalized facade, original monumental lighting fixtures, and preserved historic windows. The project included upgrades to the building's stormwater management system, which, according to its submission, meets the city's resilience initiatives for stormwater. A salient feature of the lobby is its historic grand staircase and marble flooring, located near the main entrance to the hotel. Their elegant black and white color scheme, emphasized in the checkerboard flooring and ebony-colored trim, has a stunning effect on the visitor. Maison de la Luz offers 67 guest rooms, with dining and breakfast service. Its Bar Marilou from the Parisian restaurant group, with its own address and entrance, adds additional life to the New Orleans downtown renaissance. Sixteen twenty six Aretha Castle Haley Boulevard, honoring Gulf Coast Housing Partnership, Gideon Community Development Corporation, CCWIV Architecture LLC, Shrank Endem and Flanagan, Cobalt Construction. When the owners acquired this unsightly circa nineteen thirteen building, its roof was missing, leaving interior walls and floors exposed to the elements. Steel channel beams revealed where the second story and roof had been supported. Although much of the original brick storefront fortunately remained, only arched brick heads and sills remained at many exterior openings. Using historic tax credits, funds from the New Orleans Redevelopment Authority's Facade Renew and Commercial Gap Loan programs, and a Louisiana Main Street Restoration Grant, the rehabilitation project included a complete transformation of this deteriorating structure preserving, repairing, and restoring the original features while installing new, appropriately detailed elements. The brick parapet, cornice detail, and center ornamental medallion were gently restored. Remnants of the original granite entryways were retained with new tile material filled in to mimic the details shown in historic photographs. The grand second story wood windows were restored or matched. The restoration of this striking brick store completes the transformational revitalization of the 1600 block of Aretha Castle Haley Boulevard, reinforcing the resurgence of the Dryad Street Commercial Corridor. This area historically served an ethnically diverse working class clientele, including Jewish, Irish, Italian, and German immigrants, as well as African Americans during the Jim Crow era. By the 1970s, however, the vibrant street had lost its vitality, leaving this early 1900s department store abandoned and left to deteriorate. In its heyday, the honored building housed the Grand Leader Department Store and McCrory's Five and Dime. It is now home to two thriving commercial tenants. The Sazerac House, honoring Sazerac Company Incorporated, Tramplin Pier Architects, Ryan Guti General Contractors, Holt Consultants, LLC, Moses Engineers. This full-scale historic rehabilitation and adaptive reuse incorporates two 1860s-era buildings that had been vacant and derelict for 30 years, revitalizing one of New Orleans' most prominent corners at Canal and Magazine Streets. The six-story Sazerac House encompasses nearly 52,000 square feet and pays homage to the storied history of America's first mixed spirits drink. It is also the official cocktail of the city of New Orleans, as well as the namesake and home place of America's largest spirits company. 
The project created a state-of-the-art interactive cocktail museum, an active distillery, corporate headquarters, and an event venue all rolled into one. Taking advantage of historic tax credit programs, the winning team renovated the historic properties from top to bottom, including stabilizing and reworking their structural systems, removal of deleterious additions, and returning the buildings to a period-appropriate visual appearance while adding critical infrastructure upgrades to reduce stormwater load on the city's systems. Challenges were right. The intensity, complexity, and technological innovations required fast, creative solutions. Designers worked to create a world-class museum experience, which blends historical artifacts, active alcohol production capabilities, and advanced technology while maintaining the aesthetics and charm of the eras represented. Three floors of interactive exhibits include projection mapping, virtual bartender experiences, touchscreen animation, and fully interactive audio and video components presenting guests with a one-of-a-kind experience. The focal point is a 46-foot tall, three-story, glass-enclosed display wall showcasing New Orleans-specific Sazerac projects, which serves as a backdrop for the monumental staircase that connects the exhibits. A sixth floor was added, with minimal impacts on the building's massing and visual presence. Senior Ray Brulator House, honoring the historic New Orleans collection, Wagoner and Ball, Shrank, Endem and Flanagan Engineers, TLC Engineering for Architecture, Tillotson Design Associates, Edward Duggar and Associates, Cypress Building Conservation, Bywater Woodworks. Through the years, the circa 1816 Sanuray Brulator House has housed wine importers, furniture makers, Bohemian artists who created the iconic images of its courtyard and the city's first television station. After a prolonged dormancy and six years of planning, archaeology, and construction, the historic New Orleans collection has restored this significant Creole-style landmark as a history museum, transforming its famed courtyard into the heart of its Royal Street campus. Articulated to preserve the scale of the courtyard, the new tricentennial wing is designed for large-scale exhibitions, while on the exterior, the windows gracefully reflect the historic courtyard space. At the Royal Street facade, the team reconstructed the historic cornice, reinforced original balconies, and removed layers of paint from granite lintels and pilasters. Workers extensively leveled, repaired, and repointed the original brick and timber structure. Following discovery of early brickwork intact beneath a concrete slab, herringbone brick flooring was recreated at the Welcome Center and gift shop. The architects created a walkable glass cover at the courtyard to showcase past paving strata underfoot and a concealed brick-lined well, revealing the city's high groundwater table that fluctuates with the level of the Mississippi River. The design of the new tricentennial wing echoes existing materials, using a larger scale to distinguish new from old. The impact of the necessary taller ceilings and roof line on the scale of the courtyard was mitigated by wrapping the lower roof line of the existing wings across the new building and stepping the facade back above that level. Texaco Service Station. Honoring Patrick Finney, Collectivio, Macrosti Historic Advisors, JMT Construction, AM Creative Finishes, Matthew Holdren Design, and Mosa Design Fabrication. This one-story concrete block and stucco building was constructed in 1949 as a Texaco branded service station and restored to its era in 2019. Between 1936 and 1964, over 10,000 of these stations were built based on the modern style prototype developed by the industrial designer Walter Dorwin Teague for Texaco. Most have been demolished, replaced, or altered beyond recognition, leaving this one at 3060 St. Claude Avenue as a rare surviving intact example in Orleans Parish. The building's adaptive reuse as the Galaxy Restaurant and Bar provides charm and furthers the revitalization of the St. Claude Corridor in the Upper Ninth Ward. Modifications made in the 1970s included a mansard roof and stone veneer, concealing most of the original elements. 
Exploratory demolition revealed that under the exterior veneer, most of the original character-defining features remained intact, including the canopy's curving corners, horizontal fins, evidence of the horizontal banding, and the original green and white paint scheme. There were even ghosted impressions of the Texaco stars and historic signage visible about the service bays. Interior elements, such as the original fixtures and tiles in the restrooms, also remained. Participating in historic tax credit programs, the team carefully restored the building's exterior, including stucco repair and painting, reconstruction of the canopy, horizontal fins, and storefront at the former office, the fabrication of a new overhead door to match the existing original, and custom fabrication and replacement of the missing horizontal banding, the historic signage, and of course, the Texaco stars. We hope you enjoyed the award-winning projects with us. Visit our website, louisianalandmarks.org, where you'll find links to all the episodes in this series, the complete awards digital catalog, and a map for the self-guided driving tour of this exemplary work. Congratulations again to the winning teams, and thanks to the many sponsors and patrons who made this series possible. Please join Louisiana Landmark Society by becoming a member and support the preservation of the unique architectural legacy of our city.